Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, where we discuss all sorts of things Germanic heathenry related. My name is Jesse. I am your host. Let's get into it. Welcome back, everyone, to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast here on um, wherever you're catching it, Spotify, YouTube, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Thank you all so much for being a follower, being a subscriber, and showing your support by upvoting, by liking, by commenting, by sharing, by interacting in all the ways that you do, and for writing in, calling in, you know, uh, sharing your thoughts in comment sections of the various uh, social media platforms. You guys really helped build this show up into what it has become. You know, we've got a lot of really interesting takes on on things. Not, you know, I, I wouldn't say that they're 100% or always heathen-centric, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're, uh, I think a lot of folks who are diehard recon, hardcore recon heathens <clears throat> would have a lot to say about what I do here. But it is random, you know, random being the operative word, uh, ramblings of a heathen. Um, and sometimes my heathenry um, branches off into other aspects of spirituality and stuff, and that's what we've been seeing some somewhat lately. If you've been following the podcast and hearing or seeing some of who we've had on here, uh, you'll notice that you know we we're, we're branching off a little bit. We're we're reaching out a little bit. Last time uh, we had uh, Benjamin Davidson, who does dream readings or dream interpretations. Um, it's very possible that will be featured on one of his uh, upcoming episodes on his, um, I think it's the Dreamscapes, but it's, it's, it's his YouTube channel, but Dreamscapes is, is the, the platform, not the platform, what am I trying to say, the, uh, the playlist, there we go, the playlist um, that his um, dream interpretations and all that are on, I think. Um, but anyway, check his stuff out, Benjamin the Dream Wizard Davidson. But anyways, today's episode is not about Benjamin. Um, we got someone who is also not heathen uh, coming onto the show here in just a moment. His uh, name is David Masano. I believe he is a uh, like a fitness coach. Um, he has some content out, I believe. Um, we're gonna find out more what his, you know, where you can find him, his platforms, and all that. I want to say he might also have a podcast. Um, going to confirm that once we get him on here, because if he does, and, you know, fitness and all that is is, is your uh, wheelhouse, and you really like to um, pick someone's brain or, or, or see what other people in the fitness circuits are doing, um, then he's going to be the one to, to check out. But um, the reason why he's going to be on here today is not just about the fitness and, and finding, you know, um, help through fitness and, and finding ways to improve our quality of life through fitness, but also... Um, his background is a bit of an interesting story, and I'm going to wait to elaborate more on that once he gets on here to talk about his uh, background, his whole life. I think he is a uh, military veteran, younger guy, uh, but a military veteran nonetheless. He uh, also comes from a pretty large family. I want to say his uh, family, he is one of either eight or 11 children, <laughs> Um and so, uh, yeah, it, it was like I, I read his bio and, and, and learned a little bit about him from what information he shares on, on his platforms. And I thought, man, um, this would be a great guy to have come on here. Um, he did reach out to me first. Um, so thank you, David, for reaching out to, uh, to ask about coming on the show uh, because I guess from the description of what he had seen online about, you know, what this podcast is about, um, he, he, he had some interest in, in wanting to to learn a bit more about it. So, you know, this could be a uh, an, an interesting podcast, uh, something a little bit different to talk about things, again, not heathen-related, but who knows? Um, it is a heathen podcast, so we always somehow find a way to get there. So before we get started, we do be sure to check the Linktree link in the comment or the description area and show notes of the podcast for all the ways that you can support what I do here. Um, all the links to everything that you can follow, um, subscribe to, um, become a member of, anything like that, you know, it's all down there in that Linktree link, so do be sure to check it out before the end of this video, 
while you're watching this, if it is on YouTube, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it around. Um, and if you're listening to this on any other platforms, whenever, wherever you're listening to, do be sure to upvote this. Follow along if, if, if what you are into kind of lines up with what I'm doing here talking. So it would be great. Uh, we'd greatly appreciate it. Um, so don't, don't want to, uh, you know, waste any more time or delay any further. So joining me today, I'm going to be welcoming in David Masano. He's a fitness coach, I think. Um, but yes, welcome to the show, David Masano. Let's get into it. All right, folks. Well, uh, like I was saying earlier on in the intro, we've got a, a new kind of guest on the show today. We've got uh, David Masano, a young gentleman out on the West Coast who is the the face and the inspiration, I guess, behind, is it Vinny, Vidi, Vici? Is that right? Fitness? Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right, cool. So, David, uh, welcome to the Random Healing Ramblings podcast, man. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, man. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, so, I think it would be great to just Give the people that are watching and listening uh, a little bit about yourself. You and I talked uh, a little bit before, you know, something about your background. But um, I guess let's start, if you don't mind, with uh, this this uh, Vinny Vidi Vici. I know that's Latin. If I'm remembering correctly, it means something. Why don't you ex elaborate yeah. and explain to people? <laughs> yeah. So it's actually there's two Latin quotes that really have stuck with me. It's that one, which means I came, I saw, I conquered. Um, I'm very adamant about that. When I do, when I do see something um, and I want it, I'm going to conquer it. So that's like the whole meaning behind the fitness part, um, the nutrition and the mindset. Um, the other one is Cogito Ergo Sum is I thought, therefore I am, which is also yeah. very true to my heart. Um, so basically like that's what my teaching is around. Basically, we go from changing up your nutrition and your working out. And sometimes we don't even change and or add any type of workouts into your nutrition. Because if you think of it, when people are super overweight, like tons and tons of pounds on them, like 300 pounds, you think they're going to want to go to the gym? No. So why would you send somebody to the gym when they don't want to go? Why not make it easier? That's why a lot of these fitness gurus are just like, I don't, think they understand what they're doing sometimes it's don't go to the gym if you're 300 pounds start with your nutrition and sometimes you could do nutrition with them and they never even go to the gym and get in better shape than most people mm -hmm. and that's what I try to do is try to show people how simple and it can be how simple it can be to just go to the gym um my main thing too is that I show people to have fun with it I had a client actually my biggest result I had with a client was I had him show up at the gym. And as soon as he showed up, the rule was he had to leave. And he <laughs> did that for three months and lost 45 pounds because sooner or later he started wanting to work out. So it's oh, wow. all about incorporating habits, incorporating things into the program of our subconscious. And when you start to program, you can't change yourself with the same self that you are. It's, it's almost impossible to do. It's like drug withdrawal. So you have to learn how to do things that will change and alter you that you can't see. And that's what a coach is for. So that's kind of what I, I build my things around. Like people think, oh, you need to cut out this candy. You need to cut out all this bad processed food. And it's like, no, you don't. There's a few tweaks that you need to make from that. Maybe eat less of that, but you can still eat it. I see. So you seem to have a pretty light handed approach with a, a, a strong vision in mind, you know, it's not all just gung ho running there, guns blazing, you know, let's see how much we can lift that sort of thing. Unless they want to, it okay. all depends. And I make everyone take a test before I, when I get on that call with them, I have to really understand who I'm working with. So if it's somebody that's like, I need to lose this weight because I'm addicted or I need to get away from this vice and I need to change. I need to make a new habit. And I want to try out the gym um, or my relationship with my family or a divorce is going to happen or I'm going to lose my business or job because I mostly work with business owners. That's my main focus is I work with family business owners. And mm -hmm. usually it's people that are overweight that don't have enough energy to actually go through the day and work on their business 
or people that are struggling to keep their family life incorporated with their business and it's soon to be a divorce or their children don't they don't get enough time with their children and that's where my job comes in is I teach them how to incorporate a little bit of gym how to incorporate a little bit of nutrition and make little tweaks to change their physique which changes their metabolism which changes how they feel which changes how they think about themselves when they look in the mirror Oh, yeah. And all these little domino effects change who they are. And like I said, it depends on who the person is. So if their why is like, oh, I need to do this or I'm going to die, we start hitting it pretty hard. Whereas yeah. it's like, oh, if I, I just want to try this out, we'll hit it out and they'll see who I'm about and what I'm about. And then we start upping it as time goes on. Okay. I like that. So you kind of tailor it to the client, you know what I mean? It's not yeah. a textbook, every one size fits all sort of approach. Yeah, and that, that's the thing is I think a lot of coaches today think, oh, you need to do it my way because my way worked. Mm -hmm. But that's not the point of coaching. If you ever and I've had multiple mentors, I'm on my third mentor now. and I've paid a lot of people or a lot of money to work personally with experts. And that's the key to success. People want to ask what the fast lane to wealth in and success is by somebody that's already where you're at. That's that's how you do it. Work with somebody that you're already that's already where you're at or where you want to be. You want to be. Yes. And then you'll get there a lot faster. But my key thing is that I've learned from all my mentors is they don't it's none of their stuff like they don't use any of what they've done on me they show me what i'm strong at mm. and then they show me how to incorporate that and make it a lifestyle and that's what i show people is like we need to make this a lifestyle what's the easiest way to make this a lifestyle mm. okay if we make a three to ten percent change within ourselves every week what is that going to look like and we're going to make we're going to i'm going to ask them that question OK, what is one thing that, you know, you can do this week that's easy and simple that will move the needle this week? And I, that's that's what I'm here for. I'm here to guide you. I'm here to simply show you that. OK, perfect. This is how we're going to do that. This is how we can achieve that. And I'll slowly it's almost like a therapist. The therapist yeah. asks you these different questions and then you finally find the solution. That's what I am is because so many so many people think in these these limited mindsets like i can't get there i'm too fat i don't know what i'm doing things like that and then my job is to break through that barrier to let them understand no you do know what you need to do and this is how we're going to do it and we slowly break down those barriers then sooner or later three four five months these people are peak level of fitness it's so easy to make a lifestyle they don't go to the gym any longer i've never had a client mm. that went to the gym longer for than 35 minutes a day for five days a week, sometimes only three days a week. And I've never had them cut out candy. I never had them cut out processed food. None of that stuff. You can still eat that. We yeah. focus on one goal and one goal only. And we get, I give them a calorie count. And the only thing we focus on in that calorie count is protein. So let's say mm -hmm. I give them a 2200 cal or calorie macronutrient plan. And then in that calorie plan, you have to get 180 grams of protein. Protein is not is a, is not a dense calorie calorie dense food. Yeah. So, you, let's say you eat your 180 grams of protein, and that only took up about 1,200 calories for the day. You now have almost a thousand calories left to eat. So, what can you do? You just backfill that. You can eat candy, but just make sure you just stay in the calorie count. You can eat all that unhealthy food, but make sure you get your protein intake. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we don't focus on fat. We don't focus on carbs. We focus on your protein and then you can backfill from there. Do you think that, um, you know, being so, I guess, like lean, I don't say lenient because I know there's structure and and I know that there's like a plan in place. But what I'm what I'm getting from you is, is, you know, you're not like so rigid, I guess, with it, you know, like there's. Again, everything's tailored to the person, but do you think that when people start to take control of their fitness and their wellness and their health and they start realizing that, yeah, I can eat some of these things, do you think that eventually like the mind kicks over and is like, but I don't need that crap. I don't need that processed junk. I can do, I can fill the, those gaps. I can fill that 
caloric intake with better quality things versus just something to to fill a space. Does that happen for you with your clients? And not only so everything that I teach my clients is what I've done. Anything that I tell my client, I've never, it's not something that I haven't done before. So mm-hmm. I've tried so many diets. My key thing is I go around trying new diets to give the exact experience of what it's truly like. Um, this recent diet that I've been on, uh, I, I'm actually working up towards something. Um, it started out as a 12 hour fast with a, um, what was it keto? So it was a 12 hour fast with keto. And that's what I did. It was just keto and a 12 hour fast. Very simple. Um, I had a calorie deficit, but with keto, you are able to retain more fat. So it's, mm-hmm. it's a lot more fat, which the way it works is truly amazing. And I know a lot of people hate keto, but if you've I've messed never around with it, it. yeah, yeah. I've... The key thing, the thing that I liked most about it was the mental, the mental clarity that I had with it. Um, I felt so mentally clear the difference though. Um, I didn't like it at the start because it was the withdrawals were, were real at the start, but once you get past the withdrawal part, it's, it's different. You start to feel good. You're mentally clear. You don't. And the, the key thing about keto is you're trying to keep control of your, your insulin and glycogen levels, which is your energy level. Mm -hmm. And basically when you have carbs, it usually spikes, Yeah. but there's ways to work around with that. Like athletes need carbs. So it's different, but when you're on keto, basically you never, your insulin levels are not fluctuating because you have no carbs in you. So it's just really high fat and really high protein, but the proteins are a lot leaner. It's more so Mm -hmm. a lot of fat, um, which helps you just slim down. And I've had the, the most amazing transformation I had was a lady that lost a hundred pounds in a year. I'm never like she went from fat to skinny extremely fast. And it was, it made me cry. It was crazy yeah. because she not, that wasn't the only thing that changed her relationship changed. She got a new job. She became closer with their family. And that's, that's what I go for. I, you're going to look good either way, but when you look good and feel good and think better, everything else in your life is going to be better. But yeah, Key thing with like, I just started, uh, I got into the carnivore diet. So I don't know if you know mm-hmm. the carnivore diet. It's very, very simple. And it's, it's based off of like a Northern Icelandic diet and all way back in the day. So it, you can have fruit, the more extremist with the diet, they don't, it's literally all it is, is meat, salt, and water. That's all you can have but wow. they, you can eat whatever you want. So you basically eat intuitively. And the crazy thing is you'll lose tons of weight because protein keeps you fuller and you get a lot of fat. Oh, you can eat butter too. So the other, you need to eat butter with it yeah, uh, to get enough fat because yeah. now your fat, your source of energy is coming from fat. From fat, so exactly. Yeah, You can eat whatever you want on the diet and I lost two pounds. Like I didn't have much to lose, but I was 178 pounds. I lost two pounds in two weeks and lost almost, I was 6% body fat. When I started, I lost another percent of body fat, eating way more calories than I was actually eating on the keto diet. And it was crazy to me, Hmm. but I'm actually, I'm a CrossFit athlete too. So I work out a lot because I compete in competitions, but the main thing with with a diet. A lot of people think, oh, I can do this for a month and I'm good. No, like you kind of have to get acclimated. Your body has to get acclimated. Like I put myself through a lot with these different diets to show people exactly what happens instead of just giving them this number and these different, these different analytics. I show Mm -hmm. them what it's exactly like. And I give them real feedback. This is what happens. This is how I feel. I made a lot of mess ups. Like when I first started the carnivore, I tried to get off caffeine at the exact same time, which was a huge mistake. Um, You don't want to withdraw from caffeine the same time you're changing your diet. Yeah, It will really mess up your chemicals, your hormones. I'll tell you, Uh, I did something one time not to, uh, and I'll let you continue, but just to to insert something here. I did something one time. It was like a total body cleanse uh, plan. It was like, it was a 21 day long program. 
And there were supplements and stuff that they, you know, so you buy this kit. Uh, Beachbody, I think, was the name of it. I don't know if you ever heard of it. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay. But they send you like supplements and, and, and you know, it, it, I hated it. I was, I was miserable for, you know, two weeks, well, three weeks, basically. I lost like 15 pounds, <laughs> Okay, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. um, but it wasn't sustainable. And that's what, that's what I always get. I'm like, this is, it, it was great, I guess, for just like, if you wanted to, I don't know, do like a hard reset on your body, like, cause it, it cuts everything. Eventually it cuts everything out. Like I stopped drinking alcohol, no caffeine, no other stimulants like tobacco. So, you know, vaping, nothing like that. I mean, I pretty much like changed my diet overnight and took out all of the other extracurricular components to my life. And I guess I got used to it at some point, but I was like, I can't wait for this this fucking thing to be over. (laughs) Cause it was, it was like, it just, it felt like a chore, you know what I mean? And I, I don't know how you've encountered with people that probably come to you having done other diet plans and stuff. And they're like, I don't want this to be another fad or, you know, it's just something that I start overnight and, you know, start one day and then, you know, a week or so later I'm, I'm burnt out on it. Right. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the key is a lot of these gurus. Now they're like, do it my way. And I, I joined a group and that's kind of how it is. Like, excuse my language, but they'll just say, Oh, you're just being a bitch. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. it's, you're not man enough or you're not disciplined enough or you don't want it bad enough. And yes, you can say that you can say that, but realistically, is that what we're going for? Like, is that what we want to be known for? Like what you can definitely put pressure on them. There's good. There's definitely clients where it's like, okay, this is what we're going to work on this week. Uh, I always make small implementations. Like, for example, if I were get if, if somebody came up to me right now and they had a candy addiction, they drunk six beers a night, they drunk a six pack, they drunk tons of alcohol um, and barely any really healthy food. And all of it was like top ramen, things like that. Yeah. The first thing they don't work out. The first thing I'm going to do is not tell them cut all the drinking out. It's 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 slow withdrawals. Want to remember three to ten percent, depending on where they're at. Like if they want to, if they say, "Hey, like my relationship's going in the gutter, and I'm about to lose my wife. I need to get in shape and stop doing this stuff." We're gonna be a little more extreme. Yeah. Where is there? Like I just want to see if this will work. I heard that you know what you're doing. Okay, like we're gonna change. What's one thing that you know that you can do? This week, that'll change for you. Okay, you drink all this alcohol. Let's just cut back a little bit and drink more water. Mm -hmm. Then by the end of the week, let's see how you feel. I want you to tell me how you feel. Mm -hmm. Oh, you feel better? Perfect. Okay, now you're sleeping better too? Oh, even better. Like now we're seeing... It's it's wins. You got to yeah. you got to accumulate all these little wins. And sooner or later you're going to start thinking clear, feeling better, sleeping better, and all this little stuff you're going to be like, "Oh, I don't I don't want to go back to that other stuff." That's yeah. what happened to me. When I first got into fitness and nutrition, I was addicted to weed. I wouldn't even say I don't even think you could get addicted to weed. Um, but yeah, I was smoked a lot of weed. I drunk alcohol. These were my vices, but I love people that come to me that have an emotional attachment to food. Why? Because that was me. Mm -hmm. And when you learn to go inside of yourself and deal with the true problem of why am I actually eating all this food? Then you start to understand why, like what you need to change. For me, I always had this an emotional attachment. I was bullied when I was a kid. So my biggest thing was I wanted to get big and strong so no one would ever mess with me again. And that's, I look like this big jacked 185 pound dude and no one will mess with me. You know, that's, that was what I wanted to go. But then when I, when I'm around food that grew up so much in me that I needed to eat and eat and eat. Cause I was just a skinny kid when I first, when I was getting bullied. And then when I started packing on muscle, I had to eat and eat and eat and eat. And then I made myself feel bad that when I didn't eat, because then I was going to be like, I'm getting going to get bullied. Mm. Then it became a subconscious thing that I was unconsciously eating all this food that whenever food was next to me, I'd just start munching on food. And it made yeah. me that sensation of feeling better. But when you start to become conscious about these things, 
they get a lot easier to deal with. But it's little small implementations. You change like when I did this carnivore diet, the first week was the hardest. Um, but then I started incorporating just eating, just let my body intuitively tell me when I'm full. And yeah. protein makes you fuller a lot faster. And mm -hmm. I got even more shredded than I was. I'm at about 5% body fat, but even more shredded than I was on a normal diet. And I feel the biggest thing is my energy levels, excuse me, are peaked. Like I've yeah. never felt better. And on top of that, my, my performance in the gym has went up. Mm. I feel mentally clear and I love it. But the next part I'm going into what is called an OMAD. I don't know if you know it, the OMAD diet. Mm. But I don't think I've heard of that one. It's like the last part of the diet. It's it's not extreme, but it takes a while to get used to. Um, they a lot of I've heard a lot of people that do these, and they most of them are monks. Um, a lot of them are monks, but there are elite athletes that do this too. Uh, the OMAD diet is basically you only eat one meal a day, but it's a ginormous meal. Like okay. it's yeah, and like you all eat your right calories for the day. Bed. Yes. Oh, wow. But it's it's a massive meal. Like it's a very, very big meal. And then you fast for the rest of the day. Uh, and basically the first week I've always, from what I've known and seen the different experts that have done it and the different, most of them, like I said, are people that live in the forest, people that are monks, people that are very extreme athletes. Mm. And those are the ones on this type of diet. But the OMAD diet is like, it's next level. A lot of people think that, or a lot of people say how they start to feel after a month of just being on it and what it does to their body and not only their body, what they start to do to get away. Like they get away from that sensation of trying to eat food, but yeah. would I throw somebody on the OMAD diet right away? Definitely yeah. not. Like, right. yeah, not, yeah. not happening ever. Unless like, of course you've practiced this. Cause it's like, it's literally like a 23 hour fast. Yeah. And then just gorge on food and then huh. you go straight back into it. And the, the reason why you gorge on food at night is because you gorge on so much food that you just knock out mm -hmm. and then you go to sleep very full and wake up the first the first week. They say you wake up extremely hungry all the time, but it's just little little increments that you make towards success. Yeah. Yeah. Trying different things. And that almost sounds like. um like maybe what would be, have been more of a uh, a primal way of life, you know, because if you think about just what we have access to as a, as a, you know, modern humanity, I mean, everything is so readily available. You're hungry. You can open up your fridge or open up your cabinet, your pantry, go to the store, drive through a fast food place. I mean, everything is so easily accessible. Whereas, you know, not even all that long ago, you know, the, Families had to, you know, cook and prepare their meals or grow their own foods if they wanted to eat. It wasn't, it wasn't like, oh, I'm hungry. Let's just open up the the icebox or the freezer and and cook something. It was if you were hungry, you had to go catch it or go pick it out of your garden or go to your root cellar where things were stored during the non-growth seasons, right? The winter, the leaner months, and uh and and prepare something. Everything you had to work for it. And I think that now here and today in, in modern times is, you know, a lot of people become so complacent. I mean, we're all guilty of it. I'm not, I'm not trying to say like, I'm better than you. Cause I've had to do the same thing, you know, Oh, I'm hungry. Open up the fridge, see what's in there. Um, but I've also grown up in a, in a, with a lifestyle that, you know, I, I worked on a farm for over a decade. I, everybody in our family or in, in, in fam, and friends had gardens, you know what I mean? So I grew up around the, the idea of living off of the land, growing, raising, harvesting, your own food and it it's so enriching and it's so fulfilling kind of like how you go and you work out right you're you're exerting physical effort and you feel better about the meal that you're about to eat or that you have eaten because i earned this you know it gives me the energy the fuel to want to go and put it to use you know and yeah, that's what exactly. i like about how fitness can can overall help us holistically right it's not just how yeah. good we look or the physical things that we're capable of doing when we embrace that it's everything benefits again you have a clearer mind you you have a better outlook on life depression doesn't affect so many people that are focused on on health and wellness you know because why 
they're they're feeding their body they're they're feeding this machine with quality things with good things and yeah. so the machine runs better every in and out yeah. inside and out right yeah and that's that a lot of people think that fitness is to, to look better there's scientific proof that after you work out there's serotonin re, serotonin oh, yeah. inside of your body that and people do not like listen to this like this is the number one thing why people actually like become gym rats it's not because they enjoy doing it it's the feeling they're after yeah like there's a lot of people that go to the gym like you might think they're happy like these people that do ironmans and these people that do these different crazy fleets of marathons and triathlons that is you have something deep you're dealing with and that's how they deal with it mm. and I've, I've known a lot of like, there's a lady I I don't remember off the top of my head what her name is, but she runs triathlons and eats whatever she wants. But I mean, you can do that when you're a triathlon runner, like you're you burning through. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She eats whatever she drinks beer, eats what you can do that. But you look at her and she looks like a normal person. She enjoys eating. She enjoys having fun. She goes out. She enjoys life. But when you watch her work out, she has a demon inside of her, like definitely <laughs> tormenting her. And yeah. that's what people don't understand. Like a lot of people's lives, like I had stopped working out for a while and I realized I couldn't hold that up. Like you kind of get addicted to the feeling of actually working out because mm -hmm. like every day I try to put this message out there. Like I will make your workouts fun. I will make them interesting. You don't have to be there long. My goal is to get you in the gym, get you out of the gym, make you feel good. And you go and conquer that day. I go, I could be like having a bad mood, be in a bad mood. I go touch some weights, man. Let's, let's go have a party. Like this is the best. Yeah. Why is that serotonin chemical release in your body? And it yeah. just lights you up. And that's what people don't understand. They think, oh, like these people are just working out just to look good that's not at all true like the byproduct it, of it it's just yeah yes. i mean it happens so yeah it's like a nice exactly but even like in the viking days like those people the romans like the great athletes when they worked out like that they got addicted to it like that was their way of getting away because you actually feel something hmm. i've but, also felt yeah. that with um with doing any sort of construct constructive behavior constructive activity right anything mm -hmm. that that uh you because like let's face it there there is a mental aspect to fitness right i mean you're you're calculating you know reps you're doing things like you're counting like i'm saying like there's cognitive things going on in your mind but uh anything like that whether it's gardening whether it's hiking any any sort of physical activity right it doesn't even have to be going to the gym per se but it does it 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 releases those feel good, you know, that the, the, your dopamine levels rise, it's that serotonin's released, like you feel overall just better about things. And I, you know, I've, I've worked out not recently, but um, I, I used to be, uh, as a kid, I, was, I, I had a propensity to just be a little pudgy. And mm -hmm. um, my uncle at the time, you know, he was like, <clears throat> come lift weights with me. And, you know, he had like a, a gym in his uh, in his house and he also had a membership, but we would work out in his basement. And uh, he eventually has like he had gotten to the point where he had like a full gym in his in his basement, man. Like, you know, yeah. Smith machines, you know, leg presses, benches, the everything, dumbbells, free weights, um, just everything. And yeah. uh, it, it was like, come and do this with me. And that's when I was a kid, man, I'm like, I'm, like, I'm talking like 13, 14 years old, maybe. Yeah. Um and uh, that's what got me hooked on it. And I, I, I worked out like I would get up and I would go work on the farm. I'd go to my regular job, which was very physically demanding. And then I would get off work and I would go work out. And I look back and I'm like, I didn't even need to because from all the work that I was doing on the farm or, or at my job, like, it was all very physically uh, you know, demanding work and labor. But something about going to the gym, something about going and, and doing it for the fun of it, not to create something not to build something but just to like i don't know just just do it you know and it, yeah. it, it, it's like it does something to you it, it, you know i i felt really good about it and of course you know the results of which were i wasn't pudgy anymore right i was cut i was ripped i could lift more weight but for my size 
than what the the average person would think. You know, I was maybe like a buck forty five at the time, you know, yeah, but yeah. I was I was I was lifting, you know, three, four times my weight. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And people are like, how is right. that little squirt able to do that? I'm like, just, you know. Yeah. Being so that I have active, a so. for you. So mm-hmm. then, okay, you you grew up on a farm. Did you guys ever eat brief? Did you guys eat breakfast? Yeah, actually. Um, so it was a beef farm. And so we raised beef cattle. Okay. And uh, so I, we would, I would usually get up like before the sun would come up, you know, so it was really early. I wouldn't eat then. I would go, we would go do our chores. Um, but then we would have a mid morning, like around eight or so, we would stop our chores and and then have something to eat, some some sort of breakfast, you know. Nice. And then I would come back home and and fuel up for the day. I would have like a second breakfast, if you will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But there nice. was always, yeah, there was always like something there, whether it was you know pancakes or whether it was, um, you know, some kind of whole grain something, mm-hmm. you know, something like a like a buckwheat, something yeah, yeah, heavy, you know, something to really sit sit heavy with you but give you that energy yeah to do all that stuff but yeah we did yeah that was so the main reason why i crazy question i asked it because i just like got into this understanding like i fast for a reason i just don't i think there's so many scientific researches not even just scientific but anybody that actually does fast they they start to realize what it does for you but even at people that work out when they start to fast, if you were to do just one, I think, I think it's a 19 to 36 hour fast once a week, mm-hmm. your growth hormones triple yeah. in just that short amount of time. And like, that was my biggest thing. I know we had just started talking about previously, right before that last topic was about the, uh, just going out and hunting for your food and getting your stuff. So there's actually people and everyone keeps going to visit them. It's it's all over YouTube, but a lot of very, uh, like the, um, that meat eating guy, like primal guy, forget his name. Uh, <laughs> Liver King. Yes. Liver Ryan King. Johnson, Liver yeah. King went out there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, those, the Jordan. modern day primitive tribes in like Africa or, or South America yeah. and different places. Yeah. And if, if you see what they do, like it's literally like there was a, I think his name is David Chu. Um, I was listening to the Joe Rogan podcast and he said he had went out there to go live with them for a while. And what he found out was just how simple their life was. Like they would wake up and I'm not saying that I want to do that or any like, but if that's, that's what you want to do, go try it. I love trying new things. That's my thing. I want to try it out for myself. See if it's true. Mm -hmm. But he was just talking about how simple their life was. They had, uh, the first week he went through like withdrawal, like with his electronics and just city life and things like that. And then he just came down and just like was very calm, very relaxed the second week. And all they did was just run to get their food all morning. They would hunt for their food, come back at night, have a celebration for the food the men caught and eat and then go to sleep and do it all over again. Yeah. And it was like, man, like that's crazy. But not only that, like a lot of people that have gone out there are scientists and not only scientists, but athletes have gone out there and they talk about the athletic performance and the the physical structure of these people. Yeah. And all they eat is it's meat, honey, and I think fruits. And that's literally like the carnivore diet. Like mm-hmm. the carnivore diet is basically to replicate it's animal mm-hmm. products, but it's to replicate how it used to be back in the day. Like they, they ate mostly meat. Cause that was all that was there. And then during certain seasons of the the year, you would get fruits and stuff from berries and things like right. that. Yeah. So, but if you see these people, like they're ripped, just mm-hmm. the most ripped black people, like they're massive, like the most athletic people I've ever seen. Like, Oh yeah. They're better than a lot of them. They had did like some studies on their vertical jumps and some of them have 60, just standing in place. It's almost like a 50, 60 inch vertical jump. On top of that, they they just climb trees like monkeys. Yeah. They have different like things inside of their, they have different, I forget what it was, but it's like some biomes in their body that they're able to go and grab honey from the bees. And when the bees sting them, nothing They don't happens. feel it. Yeah. 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 And it's like they're ripped, jacked, all that stuff. And it's like, 
that was what really made me go on the, the carnivore diet. I'm like, and it, mm-hmm. I, and the other thing was that uh, I'm a big fan of Jordan Peterson and he talked about the different things, the different health defects that I had on him. I had a few, uh, two of the biggest things, three of the biggest things that I noticed when I went on the carnivore was after the first week, I had a cyst that I had been dealing with for almost a year now. And it was in my, it was in my neck. It wasn't cancer or anything. It was just a cyst that disappeared. That was the first thing I noticed after a week, it disappeared. The other thing I had like a small back pain for years now that went away for after, and I've only been on it for three weeks, but I, I always usually feel it during my workouts. Yeah, I haven't felt nothing. On top of that, my energy and mood levels have never been better. I've never, I stopped taking caffeine after the first week. I was very acclimated to it and I didn't feel like I needed it. Do mm. I still have it once in a while? Yeah, I, I do it like once or twice a week. Yeah, uh, but kind of yeah, an enjoyable like, thing, yeah. Like just for sure, enjoy. Yeah. yeah. But that's like, that was like the key thing is like, that's why I try it. And then even with the OMAD, that's the next level thing I want to really see and give people feedback of what it really is. Cause yeah. I mean, we keep having these certifications or these scientists tell us this is, you shouldn't do this because of research, <laughs> but I feel like until you really understand it and you try it out and I understand that some things you can't try out, you're not really going to know how it feels or what it does for your body, you know? So right. I, that's like my main goal is I, everything that I tell people and everything that I give to people I've experienced and tried to go through with the fullest. And whenever I go on a diet, I try like even the carnivore, it should last at least six months just to get the full effect and give a good example of what it's like. Yeah. But, and a lot of people say, Oh, like you can't sustain a no carb diet like that. Cause it's zero carbs in your diet. It's all protein and all fat. And mm. people are like, Oh, like, there's you need carbs for energy and beg to differ. I mm. I thought I was going to crash. That was my first thought is like I was going to be slumped. The first day I felt massive fatigue. The second day it all went away. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I just never really felt anything. And then a lot of people say, oh, like your gut's going to get messed up. My blood results came back actually better than they were before I started it. And it was, it was crazy just to see these little effects and being able to try out all this stuff. Yeah, you're like a walk-in testimony, you know, and yeah. then you can pass on that to your clients, which I do want to mention or give you a chance to mention, you know, you're talking about all these great things that you've experienced and that you use this to help others. How do you do that? I mean, so like for people that want to, you know, follow you or I'm um, assuming you have a social media platform or platforms that you share all this stuff on or, or, or journal it. Um, how do, how do people get in touch with you for this or where can people find you? Yeah. So on, I'm mostly biggest on Instagram, still building a Facebook, still building a TikTok. Um, I run mostly everything out of Instagram though. That's where okay. I communicate. People can find all my information all on Instagram. It's on Facebook and TikTok too, but my Instagram is David underscore Masano one of 18. Uh, my Facebook, you can just look me up as David Masano. And then my TikTok is going to be Cogito Ergo Zoom Fitness. And that's what I go by on TikTok. Um, and I'll have that all given to you as well. Yeah, it's going to be linked and stuff. I, you know, I always like to give my guests a chance to kind of plug their stuff. And, you know, for p- folks listening and watching, you know, as, as usual, it'll mm-hmm. be linked in the show notes in the description. Um, so, you know, we've been talking a lot about the, what, you know what I mean? Like what you do, um, we got into a little bit of an idea of, of the how, you know, and, and going through things. Um, let's talk a bit about why, why fitness, why wealth or health and wellness, what got you to this point in your life to want to pursue this as a career really i mean you, you you're taking this really seriously you're not just casual about it so what but let's get into the why what brought you there why why are you doing this yeah it's it's such a such a deep question and it hits home for me because i had started this journey when i was young i when i was 14 i was actually a suicide attempt uh i just didn't find any meaning and i know that sounds very young and it was young but i started to become more conscious and understanding of life 
I grew up in a cult religion with a very big family, 18 brothers and sisters. Um, 18? But, yes. See, I thought it was something, I mean, I, I read your bio one time, but I, uh, I it, like, before you came on and I'm like, I think he's a family of, it's like eight or 11. I mean, 18, that's like a tribe, dude. Like that's a, yeah. <laughs> that's a, yeah. that's a clan for sure. Yeah, And there, there's so many, I will never, ever forget. Like it was the best experience that you could possibly have. Like it's, you're around so many different personalities. You're never alone. You cannot be alone. You cannot be alone to yourself. You can't keep quiet. It's there. You're going to be brought out of your shell. And I, that was one thing that I was thankful for being in that family is now we have each other, you know, like they know yeah. me and they know a lot about me and a lot of what you are when you're young doesn't really leave you um, unless you really make a, a try or or a conscious effort to make a difference of who you were and the things that were brought up in you so one of the biggest things with that religion that i grew up in is it was very a lot of limiting beliefs like you can't be rich if you're rich riches are the root of all evil which totally false if you don't believe in god or if you don't become a christian in this religion you'll go to this fiery depth of hell and die they're forever being tormented and these things lingered with me and i never when i was young i was like man like i don't know if i want to what i wanted to do and i was battling this like am i going to really go to hell or can i go and experience life and make a difference because i wanted to make an impact i knew i was a leader as a young kid i was always the captain of the football team i always did the best in the sports i always gave my all always did the best in school, straight A student. I gave everything and I always will give everything. But there comes a point where you start to get something that'll battle with you and you have to battle with something. And at age 14, I started battling with that. I decided to keep going and there became fitness. I found a guy by the name of Nick Bess and he started my passion for fitness and he went through the exact same thing. For those that don't know, Nick Best is one of the world's strongest men. He's in the master's division, which means he's older than 50 years old, has one of these massive duties, like 300 pounds, squatting 800 pounds, deadlifts yeah. over 1,000 pounds, that type of stuff. Big dude. Um, I met him for the first time when I was starting high school in Las Vegas when I was 17 years old, and he turned my whole world around and just... The words that he said will always stick with me. He said, if I can do it, you can too. And when I had started this journey, I decided to give up. I was at 17 years old. I was already smoking weed and drinking. Like there was, I was already deep into that stuff. But I decided that if I wanted to give that stuff up and have a successful life, I would need to give up that. And the way to give that up, I would have to replace it with something else. And I replaced it with fitness and fitness became my drug. And when I started working out all the time, I slowly started to see over time what it did for me. And I got to see some amazing fitness people. I seen Matt Martins Lisi's, which is another world's strongest man competitor in person. Um, I got to shake his hand, trained at the same gym as him. It was nice. an amazing, amazing experience. And I got to meet all these different people, Sebum. I got to meet him in person, all these big fitness idols that I I actually, my mentor is actually Wes Watson. I, a lot of you guys might not know him, but he's a big guy, came out of the penitentiary and now is just massive, 225 mm -hmm. pound dude, just straight veins. But that's, these are the people I aspire to be like. And one of the things that my mentor has told me is to become the person that you admire inside and out and then give him to the world. And fitness has changed my life. He, when I first met Wes Watson, he had yelled at me multiple times, like, get your shit together. Mm -hmm. Like, stop being a bitch. Like, you need, you have, you have this great thing inside of you. Yeah. And you're not giving it to the world. Like, what are you scared of? Right. And that's what the hero's journey is. If anyone were to look up the hero's journey, there's actually a circle diagram. And it goes from the, the unknown to the known or the known to the unknown. And the first part of the hero's journey is a call to adventure. And from the call to adventure, you go into, you're still in the unknown, then you meet a mentor. And then that mentor starts to take you into the unknown. 
And then the under unknown, you start going into trials and tribulations. If a lot of you guys read this book, the it's the all it's called is the hero with a thousand faces is actually the true title, a hero with a thousand faces. And it's by Joseph Campbell. And it'll literally take you down into where you're at in your journey. Everyone's in a different spot. Everyone thinks they see these 22 year olds and they see these, these rich people. And they're like, I need to be there, but no, if you read the hero's journey, you'll start to understand that. Oh, I'm at this point in my journey. And it'll start to enlighten you. Okay, that's everything's happening exactly in this sequence. And that's kind of what he told me to read this book. And he gave me the blueprint and told me to follow it every day. And that if I followed it, things would, it would work out for me because of the talents that I had and the true story that I had. But one of the things he taught me to do is to let talk from the heart. There's a gap, you know, there's people that, the gap is basically this is who you are to the outside world. And this is who you are truly inside of yourself. And when you close that gap and you're able to give who you are inside of the inside of yourself to the world, then everything you say, it could be the dumbest thing you ever said. People would believe it, but because it's from here and it's aligned and there's no gap and you're not having one thing inside of yourself and another on the outside, they would believe it. Why? Because you're in tune. And that that's one of the key things is, and I, I'm, I might sound passionate about it, but that's truly what it is. I speak from the heart and being coming from the point of, of death. One of the biggest things that I learned is you have to, you have to kill yourself mentally. You have to be able to kill yourself and be reborn mentally again, because all those programs are running inside of yourself. You have your subconscious brain that is your storage of all the data that you had in your life. And those things that you are emotionally attached with will stick there until you get over it. And that's what the thing is. Like people think they need to overcome their thoughts. It's not overcoming the thoughts. It's overcoming the emotion. When you overcome the emotion, the thought will immediately go away. Because as soon as you stop giving it that emotional attachment, it has nothing to feed off of anymore. And for me, it was, it was the biggest relief. It's like lifting a thousand pounds off your chest and you start breathing this clear air again, you know? And that was, for me, that's, that's what it was. And when I had met my mentor, he took me into the unknown and that's where you find your journey. It's not where things are lightened. When you can see the path, you're probably on somebody else's road. You're probably on somebody else's journey, following their journey. But when you go to the darkest path and you go to the path where you can't see in front of you, that's your journey. And that's what I chose to do. And fitness has become such an inspiration. When I first started nutrition, I was mentally going through it at that point. And I was 20 years old and I didn't, I was fit. I was a CrossFit athlete. I was very fit. Don't get me wrong. I was competing already and I felt really good. Mentally, I didn't feel really good. And I always woke up, worked out, but I always felt like just fatigued and drained after the workout. I couldn't do anything. I needed a nap in the afternoon. And then I started to change my nutrition and everything, Mm -hmm. my mentality about life, the way I worked and all of that stuff. So that's why I'm so passionate. And I, my goal is to become that person and I live that person every day and I give that person to the world. And that's my goal is to become the person I totally admire inside and out and give him to the world. Yeah. You got to take care of yourself from within. You know, I, uh, I used to, uh, I used to do, um, martial arts training, uh, in my youth. And, uh, one of the things that, our, our instructor always said was you train the mind and the body follows. Um, but, and, and, and it's, it's like, well, what does that even mean? And, and he gave some examples of like Olympic athletes who uh, would not do any sort of physical training prior to an event or something like that. I mean, they would obviously, but there were times where they would be like just sitting there relaxing by the pool or, or laying in a chair and just chilling, you know? And, but in their mind, they're, they're going through the course, they're going through the thing that they're about to do. They're mentally lifting those weights. They're mentally skiing through 
those those courses. They're they're mentally doing the thing and they're preparing themselves internally. And it's been proven that, you know, you can you can condition your body to a certain degree by by just the sheer willpower of doing it. And I've talked about stuff like this on this podcast before about how powerful our minds, how we are, our our actual selves, not this, not this physical mm-hmm. shell that that people interact with on a, you know, on, on the physical level, but what and true who we truly are. We're powerful beings. We have we are so capable of of doing great things um that it's 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 not fully unlocked for a lot of people. You know, that 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 journey that you're talking about, that going into the unknown there's a lot of that that is very close to my heart and in my own personal practices because there there comes a point um and i and and it resonates with me what you were saying about being on someone else's path if you see the path in front of you then chances are you're following someone else's they've already they've already paved that way for you right and 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 i think a lot of us no matter what our path in, in life is whether it's you know fitness or or spirituality or any other sort of thing you know, whatever we're in doing, whatever, whatever, wherever we are in our journey, uh, yeah, sure, we we need a place to start. We need a place to begin. Um, mm-hmm. And and really, where we get to learning things is when we go off the beaten path, when we get off those exits and get lost, like purposely, you know, in a way, like like I I want to get lost out here and and try to find my way back. And it, there's a way about going it, or, or there's a way of going about it that's that's better than others but sometimes people literally just like careen off of the off of the path and be like well whatever's going to happen is going to happen and but they're ready for that they they've like they've mentally prepared themselves for the unknown that that what ifs you know and they take those risks they take those chances you know and and without doing that how how much are we like restricting or limiting ourselves to really unlock our true potentials Exactly. You know, and I think that that's the key thing, too, is like a lot of I I always relate a lot to fitness. Like one of the key things that I always say is that the scariest path is going to be the hardest path because you don't your body's going to kick like a stallion to get you to stop. Like, oh, this is not yeah. normal. This is this not is what shocking. We normally <laughs> do. Yeah. We usually complain about life. We usually don't do this. We're usually speeding down the road or we're usually, you know, complaining and, and, and eating these chips or getting lost in all these video games or TV and just doing nothing in life. What are we, why are we making a change? And then it'll, it your mind will, or your body mind, not your mind, not your conscious mind, your body mind will start to try and rear you back in to doing those old habitual habits. And dude, it's a daily battle. I don't know if you got into Joe Dispenza or if you ever got in or heard of him. Mm-hmm. That's I'm actually going to one of his uh, his uh, retreats next year. It's a week long retreat where he does. It's it's a brutal retreat, but it's beautiful. He has I think five five or six a year. They're always booked up, but basically it's seven days long. Every day you do three meditations. You start out at 4 a.m. in the morning. I think you end sometimes at 8 at night. But you do these meditations to basically reprogram your mind. And during this whole retreat, they actually have neurological um, systems. Like it's neuroscientist, um, mm. different like programs. They they actually hook you up to brain monitors. Mm-hmm. And they, to everyone, not just one person, they, they hook it up to everyone. Oh, wow. And they they show you exactly when and where your mind, your program starts to change. And you'll see it like your entire brain, because usually you're only using certain parts of your brain yeah. uh, during the day. But during these meditations that he takes you through, he has proven science. And this this dude is crazy. Like he's changed people in crazy ways. But the way he does it is it's all through you. He shows you your true power, like you were saying, that everything that we need is here in the here and now and the present moment. And that if we realize how powerful we truly are, we can heal ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's the key thing is during his meditations, he's healed people from cancer, not being able to see, not being able to walk. He's made them walk again. But the key thing is that you only are able to get. So they did a research 
during his meditation, they had a lady with cancer actually go up there and he took her through the whole meditation. They had her hooked up to the brain scanner. And during the brain scan, they actually saw her brain change. Like it lit up like, and you, she actually had a physical reaction to like, you know, when people are like, they have this gasp of like something yeah. happened. That's kind of how it was. And basically he says it's the heart bursting open, you know, and you start leading a life from the heart. And mm-hmm. basically they, they looked at it, they saw her brain and they're like, he was like, well, she just did something crazy there. And yeah. she actually went to the doctors. Um, and the very next day they said they didn't know where her breast cancer was. And it was just gone. But the crazy thing about that is that she actually went back. And the very next day, right after, she went back to the old programming of her mind. And the doctors did another scan. Her cancer was back. And it was very weird how it happens. But that's how it happens. If you Mm. program your mind and then you go back to your old past, your, your familiar past, you're starting to think from the same place where your cancer came from. Mm. And that's going to come back. So that yeah i'm actually going to one of his retreats out in uh we haven't chose where he has different locations there's a few out of the country there's a few in the country um but yeah we're we're trying to go to cancun that's the one we're trying to go to yeah i've been seeing a lot of things like this pop up in different circuits you know of course um i have a very um and this isn't like <clears throat> i always say you know my 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 how i represent myself is not a i'm not the spokesperson for Germanic heathenry or, or, or paganism as, as a whole. And, you know, I just do what I do the way I do it. And I have, mm-hmm. you know, uh, sources or, or, or you know, I, I draw my inspiration from certain root sources, that sort of thing. Um, mm-hmm. But I take a very animistic approach to my spirituality, you know, so um, I, I find commonalities and nuances across different, different things um, that, that I can relate with. But this particular thing where people are either venturing off out of their comfort zones or they're going to things like a retreat where it's like guided, almost shamanic in a way, you know, uh, guided meditations or, you know, someone who is the expert, someone who is the mentor that, you know, puts themselves in a position to help people. And and, and people are, are uh, going for these things, you know, uh, even if it's not a retreat sort of scenario, they are. They are finding, they're finding out that what people have been saying for so long about, you know, uh, awaken your higher self and and all this like seemingly like woo woo type stuff. Like there's yeah. legitimacy to it all. There is there is real, factual, scientific benefits to it all. And I think people are 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 starting to wake up to the fact that it's not just a bunch of hogwash. You know what I mean? It's not just some. Yeah hippy dippy stuff that that someone who did too much shrooms or or dropped too much acid or whatever had this revelation like no man there, there's there's real facts behind this there's science that backs this stuff up and mm-hmm. i'm glad to see people um from different walks of life realizing this because the world needs it humanity needs it we're hurting you know humanity is hurting and whether it's spirituality whether it's health and wellness i mean it all i think has you know everything ties into one another eventually you know because like you were saying before how uh you know you were working out and you were feeling a certain way but you really didn't experience the full benefit of it until you looked inward and started feeding yourself with good things and started to, focusing on the nutrition aspects of it you know that's you know healing from yeah. within and and manifesting yeah. that wellness from within first and taking care of what's inward and allowing it to to manifest outward and 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 look at the benefits that that come of it mm-hmm. yeah i think that's that's the key is that i actually just made a video about that is like you people that keep trying to go to the gym and working out and i tried it like there were times i tried intermittent minute fasting for 19 five it was a 19 five so 19 hour fast five hour eating i tried um eating healthy i tried eating whole foods i tried working out for two and a half hours i see no results but the key difference was here there was something inside of me that was bothering me and i didn't want to face it but Mm. when i switched it When I was able to actually look at that and change that, the diet that I had had no effect on it. And I started doing a Mm. diet, a simple diet, 
and it literally changed my effects. But there's also scientific research that when your mind and body are in stress, that you're able to collect fat a lot faster, almost three to five times faster than you are in homeostasis. Whereas you eat like, let's say you eat 500 calories over your normal calorie intake and where and when you're in stress mode whereas you're in homeostasis you'll lose that body weight where when you're in um a stress mode you're gonna gain exponential yeah you're gonna start getting because your body starts thinking it's in a fight or flight oh yeah crisis store that yeah and then when your body's always in fight or flight stressing out you start to retain all of that and i experienced that I got a bit chubby at one point and it was all emotional eating. And that's, I tried working out for hours and stuff like that. And you're not going to get results. And that's one, that's the first part of my phase in my nutrition plan is metabolic restoration, whatever fad diet, whatever diet you were on crazy. Cause a lot of people think they go on these massive deficits and that's the answer. No, you can keep that up for maybe a week or two and then your metabolism is messed up and then it yeah. all goes bad. And then that's, that's why we start the first phase of my fitness and nutrition training is metabolic restoration. So we figure out what's going on, what is causing this stress. We figure that out first. So that way, when we start getting into the nitty gritty stuff, we have exponential results. That's why when I told you that I had a, a client that lost 40 pounds in five months, that was the first thing we focused on. I didn't even have him start working out. I literally just said, show up at the gym and leave. And mm. that's literally what he did. The second week we did a 12 minute workout and he's like, that's it. And I'm like, yeah, go home. Like, <laughs> that's all you need to do today. And then he went home and he started noticing that he wasn't stressing. He started getting better sleep. He started drinking more water, cut out alcohol the third week. I didn't even tell him to cut out the alcohol. He chose to. Mm. And then slowly but surely, he just started making these little changes. 40 pounds later, he went from, he was only, uh, I think he was five, he's five foot five. And he was 185 pounds, which is like, a it's massively overweight. But he had told me he wanted to get to 140 pounds, which I was like, man, that's, that's massive. But we'll see. And his, he had a very big why. That's what it stuck with me is his why was really big. So after the first week of training, I saw he was dedicated and I was like, okay, like he incorporated fasting on his own. He started, I just gave him the ropes. I was like, Hey, yeah. like what one thing we could work on. Okay. Boom. Let's do that. Did you do it? How do you feel every little step? And that's what people don't understand is it's changing habits and changing your emotions first. Reprogramming. Yes, reprogramming your mind. And when you do that, I call it the metabolic restoration phase. Because not only are you fixing your mental, you're fixing your your metabolic, where, where everything happens. When you fix your mind, you start to fix your body and your body's able to process what it really needs. And then it stops stressing out. And when you stop stressing out, you're able to just let go, you know, and things just start magically happening. But it's always the ones that, and people don't really believe me until they start doing this with me, but they're like, how did, how did you get them to lose that much weight? I just told them to show up to the gym and leave. That's it. <laughs> walk 40 pounds. But that's the, literally like, that's the why. what it takes. Yeah. yeah. The why, you know, like you're saying, his why was strong. And I've talked about this too with people, um, guests and friends alike, you know, because uh, I, I think we, as as just, as a species. I mean, humanity, we have a propensity of doing things just because like somebody else did it first and Mm kind of like, you know, growing up, um, in the, in the environment that you grew up, you know, um, and, and the environment that I grew up in, you know, everybody was doing things because of what somebody else told them to do Mm -hmm. and using fear to persuade them to do it. There was no, there was no free thinking with people, you know what I mean? And uh, they they didn't have th- their why their purpose was I don't want to burn in hell for eternity, you know. Yeah. But they were it was a fear, you know. It was a fear of this mythical thing that uh, does it exist? Does it not? I mean, who knows? They're they're you know everything's based off of this uh, this this other person's perspective, this other person's angle. And I get it. I'm not trying to bash anyone for their religious or spiritual beliefs because i have my own and i feel convicted in them and everybody has it and and that's that's perfectly fine if it works for you 
then fine. But I guess what my, my point is, is do you really believe it? Is it, is, is why you're doing what you're doing? Are you purpose driven for, for, for the right reasons? Or are you just going through the motions because you don't want to run the risk of pissing off, you know, this person, that person, you know, uh, ending up in the wrong place because of, you know, what somebody else said, if it's not, if you don't have a purpose to do something, you know, so many people that I've come across do things. Cause again, it's, it's, it's in a book or somebody five, six, 700 years ago wrote about it, that that's how they did it. And it's like, yeah, well, that's, that's what worked for them. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's, yeah, they, yeah. That's why they did it. It's because they, they, and it got written down or got documented. And so, yeah, we have it as like a source, but you know, they had a purpose. They had a reason why find mm -hmm. your reason why find your purpose. Mm -hmm. Why are you doing X, Y, and Z? And mm -hmm. if you don't have it, then I think you're only going to get so far. You're not going to mm -hmm. really reap the true benefits of the thing that you're trying to, to accomplish. If you don't have a, a strong purpose behind exactly. it. So I, I have a question like for, for you, you, I, I'm really interested in your beliefs. Actually. I, I want to hear all about it. Cause I've heard a lot about paganism, but what is it? Because I know you you brought up Germanic, mm -hmm. and there was a little bit of studies that I've done with it, but I I don't know much about it. So you got to explain a little bit about it for for me. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um. So yes, paganism is as is, is it's an overarching term or an umbrella term for polytheistic spirituality, polytheistic religion. So whereas you know monotheism, things like Christianity, uh, Judaism, Islam. You know, the their higher power is is singular, right? There is is one God in 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 their beliefs. Whereas paganism all over the world brings about polytheistic beliefs. So multiple deities that make up either pantheons um or a collective of divine beings. And heathenry uh is a term that's that's usually used to describe the northern European or Germanic uh flavor of of paganism you know so where things kind of started off there uh probably has roots in in indo-european you know uh countries mm -hmm. um and it eventually be, uh, formulates into this uh uh or or it eventually reached areas like scandinavia you know so um your mainland continental germanic areas so um where germany is now um, used to be Saxony, uh, England was 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 Anglo English Anglo 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 Land England mm -hmm. England is is what was Anglo Land and then those those pagan beliefs that that originated there um, eventually made their way further north into Scandinavia so Denmark Sweden Norway um, and eventually Iceland uh, as it became settled but um, so the, the 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 belief systems right. Uh, uh, kind of have a lot of similarities there are nuances that are shared um but your gods and goddesses of the germanic peoples are figures like odin thor um yes. and uh and, and some others of course but like Tyr, um uh, freig or and freya freyr like there's different gods and stuff but the those are the divine like those are the sacred beings and at different points in time and in different areas of the world uh some of those gods were focused on more than others so the the swedes particularly had um a very strong affinity towards uh, a god named Freyr, and uh the nobility among the danes and and, and some of the other uh neighboring countries were were very uh, they had a strong affinity to um thor because mm. he was the the god of the people he was he is considered as like the protector of, of earth the protector of midgard midgard mm. meaning a, a place in the cosmos of of those belief systems so so midgard is like this middle middle yard middle area and that's earth that's where humans are and then there are other realms that uh in the stories uh are homes to different beings you know so asgard is the home of the gods it is is the the yard of the the divine so asgard is where the gods dwell and midgard is where humans dwell and then you have different realms that in throughout the stories have uh again are the homes of other uh spiritual and, and divine beings um but at its core you know it it is a very 
um, nature and, and community-based folkway belief system. Um, so, you know, things to do with nature and, and, and the earth itself and, and growing things and being, uh, being frugal in that way. It's, it's, it's the way our ancient ancestors lived, you know, they lived off of the land, mm -hmm. the, the word itself, heathen has, is, is etymologically, uh, rooted back to old proto-Germanic words that meant literally just country people, heath dwellers, mm -hmm. the, the heathens. A, later on became a derogatory term because when Christianity began to spread in Europe, uh, pagan and heathen were, were terms to describe those who did not adopt the belief systems of the church, of the Christian faith. So Got it became it. derogatory and it became a, a, a slur as, as, uh, in a way. But etymologically, like linguistically speaking, like heathen, uh, heathen is, is a word that again, has its roots in, in meaning the, the people that lived in the country, the heath dwellers, the, the, the people that lived outside of the normal, they, they were villages, they were village people, you know what I mean? They, they were small tribes that, that originated in, in continental Germ Germanic lands. And then they eventually just migrated and spread and be and found in found new lands to, to set up in, and their indigenous beliefs went with them. So they were, uh, you know, they were they were simple people. Of course, later on, and I say later on, I mean like around uh, the seven hundreds. Um, that's when the quote unquote Viking Age uh, kind of started, mm -hmm. and, and it lasted till you know about the year well, 1100, 1200, somewhere in that vicinity, right? Like it, so, it lasted a you know a relatively short period of time, about five hundred years or so. But the Viking Age was when Christianity started to infiltrate these areas and people got mad about it. They're like, no, <laughs> you can't convert us. You won't convert yeah. us. You know, we're going to, we're going to fight. And so, yes, there were some definite, uh, you know, they were, they were there. There's definitely times when, when people converted because it worked well for them to do so uh, that, and also the Kings that um, ended up, you know, the, the, the kings that were in power who said, uh, we're not pagans anymore, we're Christians. And I said mm -hmm. so. I mean, you got to do what the king says, right? So there was uh, there was a lot of that going on, but there were there were definitely um, struggles and, and, and fights to preserve their indigenous beliefs, their their pagan beliefs. And it and it resulted in wars and death and, and, and stuff. So, you know, when uh, when people hear about gods like Odin and Thor and Viking Age and stuff, there, there tends to be this, uh, people like ourselves, like modern day pagans that are, that are Germanic heathens, like, oh, you're a Viking. You know, people will say that they, 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 they use the term Viking to describe people that believe in those gods. Okay. Um, and so the term itself, Viking is, is that was, that was a time, that was a time period, the Viking Age. Yes, it, it happened, uh, with and it involved uh, Scandinavians and and Germanic peoples, but not all German descendants uh, were Vikings, right? And not all Scandinavians were Vikings. People that did raiding and and actually sailed to other areas and 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 founded places and and raided and pillaged and things like they they were doing what is called Viking, or they were it, the 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 word is Vikinger. It's it's yep. an old word that that is, you were the man, you were the you were the person who went to go Viking, mm -hmm. so uh, you were you were a pirate, you were a raider, and um, none of us now in the modern day are that. Like we're not Vikings, we don't go raiding, yeah. we don't go pillaging, we're not, you know, taking over monasteries and and stealing stuff um, mm -hmm. and bringing it back to to our families. Those yeah. were certain specific people that did certain specific things. And yes, that thing is called to go Viking. So it's like to go, if I went swimming, I'm I'm gonna go swim. Uh, yeah. If I'm hiking, I'm gonna go hike. Well, if I'm gonna go Viking, then that means I'm gonna go pillage and raid and yeah. do all these nasty things. But um, yeah, we're not Vikings. Uh, we are pagans or gotcha. humans. Yeah, yeah. And I I I love that. I was when I first started, like so my transition from Christianity the first time. Mm -hmm. it was uh greek mythology but i didn't think it was mm -hmm. mythology i actually believed in it i mean i of course when my dad found the books it was yeah i 
they're just books, you know? Yeah. But well, with such a big thing to me, with, with such a big family, I mean, so is, is, in, in, you know, if I'm prying too much, is, is all your family still where you left from? Like, do they still believe the things that you? No, only two, only two of them, really? only two. The 18, it had such an, it had bigger impacts on some of the family members than it did on me. Some of them are like, one of them in particular, two of them actually, they're both females and um, they had a huge impact done on them. Just like, they just can't let go of what it did to them mentally. Yeah, uh, It broke relationships like between them and their dad and their parents and, and their mom too. So our mom and dad were so deep into it that it was like, Oh, what we're doing is wrong. And they were cast out. It was like, Oh, like they're don't be like them, but they actually turned out one's a lawyer. The other one's very successful as well. Mm -hmm. And like, man, like, isn't it, isn't it crazy how those, those uh, belief styles like that, that, that mentality, how it can destroy something that is just so inherently wholesome family. I mean, yeah. you know, like who else do you have if you don't have family? And and that that may sound like I just, you know, got finished watching Fast and the <laughs> Furious, whatever. You ain't got family, <laughs> you got nothing. But um, no, but what I like for me specifically, like heathen heathenry uh in, in paganism, like our beliefs are you know, your kin, your family, like the 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 history of of the Germanic people and and all the way from pro, you know, before Christian times up through and including the Viking age is riddled with sagas and stories about, you know, who did this, that thing to the other a person of their family and then how vengeance was enacted or they, you know, family meant something um, back then. And, you know, it, it, it wasn't always your blood family that, that meant the most to you. It was how family was perceived and how it was seen. So there was a lot of, you know, um, adoption and fostering uh, that that took place, and and once that happened, man, like you were you were in, like you were you were part of the family. And yeah. When when things got broken, when when that family structure, when that when that family unit um, deteriorated, it was bad. Like it was bad news. Yeah. And uh, I've always really like in in my journeys and in my you know life and then how I've progressed. Um, seeing how I was raised and, and what I was brought up in, like there were, there were definitely things about it that are, I would say good morally and ethically good things. Uh, again, I, I, I grew up working on a farm and, and, and having an idea of how to live off the land, how to hunt, how to fish, how to stay warm and dry in the woods and, and do all these survival type things, right. Learning those things. Those are great things. Those are good things. And, uh, and 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 how just like the religiosity of it is is what took over and and it, and it overshadowed the fundamental purpose of what our what that group had as a potential right we could have literally been a self sustaining you know relied on each other very tribal you yes. know, in 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 its construct and the religiosity of it started to just peel things away there there's there's hardly anything left of it now mm. you know there the, the people have either died or the kids that those people had that have died have moved have gone away because they're like fuck this <laughs> yeah <laughs> like yeah jobs, cuckoo you know stuff and and uh uh i was one of them you know mm. uh i was one of them who who was like i'm i'm out of here guys you know i'm i, I literally i left new york when i was 22 yeah, twenty two years old. Where was the farm right now in New York? Yeah, I'm. A, you know, so I'm. I'm originally from New York, but I, I moved to Tennessee t almost twenty years ago. Wow. To get away from no. it, you know. So where did you guys have the farmland in New York at? Uh, so it's um, Orange County, uh, Hudson oh, Valley. Okay. Yeah. Got you. Got you. Not quite. Not quite as far up into the the Adirondacks, but um, kind of. Gotcha. I would say like. Yeah, Hudson Valley. So, you know, the lower foothills of the Catskill Mountain Range. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was born and raised on Long Island. Um, and sometimes, depending on how upset I am and or how much I've had to drink, the the Long Island accent comes out a bit more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm from there. My parents are from there. I was born there. My sister and I were raised there. And then, yeah, when I was like 
12 or 13, we moved up to where my mom lives now. Um, mm-hmm. They've had that house, you know, or since 97, 96 or 97. And uh, they've been there ever since. Well, my dad just passed away this year. So now it's just my mom and my sister that, that live up there. But uh, yeah, it's all right. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's it's just like seeing the, you know, I don't know how old you are, but over the years, like when you when you when you leave something and you start looking at it from the outside and you're like, damn, I can't believe I I actually at one point in time went along with this. Yeah. It's, it's shocking yeah, that's sometimes. It. Yeah. No, I went through the same thing, dude. It was like because as a, as a young kid, you don't I grew up in it for 16 years and it was like mm-hmm. I didn't know, like I was so young that I was like, oh, this is, and it, your subconscious is wide open. So anything that comes in, you're like, oh, this is amazing. Until you start to see like, wait a second, like, mm-hmm. and then I start telling this to different people and they're like, you live that life? Like, that's crazy. And I'm like, wait, I thought that was just normal. I thought everyone yeah. had that type of life. You didn't and then think it like, was a cult at the yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. And then you go, you look away and then you start noticing there now to say that there's things that weren't good about the way I grew up. I'd be wrong because I'm very out there. We were kept away from television and stuff like that, which made me be very more in tune and in touch with humanity and with other people. So I think that in that way, it was so, so good for me. But the limiting beliefs about money, about being able to go out there and give myself to the world. And that's, that's what it's about is like becoming the very best version of yourself and then going and giving him to the world. You know, like, what is that person that you admire? What does he look like? What does he breathe? What does he talk about? What does he think? How does that, what does he enjoy now? Give that person to the world. Yeah. We weren't taught that. And just looking back, it's like, I try the best thing I can do now is just to reprogram that and just also to look at the good because gratitude is the highest, the highest emotion in the emotional scale. So mm-hmm. always thinking on gratitude is is starting to reprogram my mind to think of the good and instead of thinking from feel fear, shame, lack, and all those low emotional vibrations. And it's more so thinking in a high vibration frequency with gratitude and love and being conscious about this stuff too so that's like the the number one key but man i think that's yeah that's crazy man like growing up on a farm because i've always wanted to do that like i think those are the simplest lives like i messed with a girl when i was uh for a little bit and she grew up in the south and it was all like barefoot stuff (laughs) like like that farming Mm -hmm. go out fishing Stuff like that. And it's the way she talked about it, it was just like, oh, his life was simple. Yeah. And she actually, but of course, same thing, religion. It's crazy. Um anything that yeah. even you know, whether it's religion or not, I think anything that um has the component of fear added to it, it as as an element of control. Cause again, you know, you're talking about things like um any you know if it's doctrine if it's if it's somebody saying that well it says it in this book therefore it has to be this way or else right the consequences are so incredibly terrifying that you're like i i absolutely don't want to do anything that would get me there you know what i mean i don't want to burn in eternity you know what i mean like that that's like that's that's frightening anything that does that and i i think there are other things too that can even if it's not like a very popular i don't know a perversion of Christianity, because that's really what it is. I mean, I, I know people, I have people in my life and in, in my family who are, as I would say, good Christian people. You know what I mean? Like they have a moral code. They 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 follow their their doctrine and they are good people. And then there's others that I've known and have come across within my life that have been um, that that doctrine has been perverted to them and they push that perversion out and and it and it becomes something twisted and not what it should, you know, wasn't ever intended to be, but even stuff outside of that, like if you have to, if you have to tell someone and what, you know, and give them an angle and use fear to try to, con- to make your point, mm-hmm. probably not the thing to, that, you know, I, I wouldn't want to be, I've never, since I've gotten into heathenry, paganism, right. Since I found this path, you know, I've never 
try to use this as 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 a fear tactic on others. Not yeah. even my own, not even my own family who I walked away from essentially and said, I'm I'm done with you guys for the time being because I can't I can't abide it anymore. Mm-hmm. It doesn't doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't speak to me. It doesn't do anything for me. I once I found my my path, like it wasn't like, and now let me go back and try to convince them why they're wrong. Mm-hmm. Never, never, never has been a thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Same. Yeah. Like I'm finding yeah, my yeah. own peace, my own purpose, and I'm finding people that align with it mm-hmm. naturally and organically. And yes, there's work to be done. Like there are things that, you know, you, you want to be accessible. You want to like kind of with you, like you have a vision, you, you've, you've branded it, you've made it something that you've, again, you, you are finding the best version of you and sharing it with the world. I love that. I, I, I you know, and it could be anything finding the best version of yourself and then don't be selfish about it. Don't keep it from people share yes. it with people yeah you know because that yeah. people people need that man like i said yeah. before the world needs healing the world needs uh visionaries and, and and people with good wholesome visions and and purpose and yeah. uh it, it, you know if you can't find a way then make a way is what i've always said like if, you know uh, find someone that can be a mentor for you or or at the very least you know guide you Give yeah. suggestions, um, and if you can, or, or or if it's a little bit tough, man, and, and and get out there and do it yourself. Like, start doing the thing, start putting yeah. in the work. Uh, it's better to try and fail than to never try at all. Man, that's so true. And I think one of the biggest things people hold on to is is material things. Mm-hmm. Is we're we're so stuck on oh, I need this and this and this to get to where I want to be, but yet you can be where you want to be in here first and everything else will come. Like a lot of people say, I can't be rich without having money. Like I don't have money to do that. I don't have a good job. I don't have an education. But yeah, if you look at all the billionaires and millionaires of the world, who were they at one point? They had no money. Like most of them went into debt. And that's the thing. Like I try to teach people, stop being afraid to chase your dreams. If you, if you're thinking you can't go to a mastermind or you can't hire a mentor because you don't have enough money, go broke for it. Why? Because that person has the exact thing that you're looking for and they're going to teach you how to get it. And that's the whole point. Like find somebody like everyone's had a coach, like Jordan had a coach, Kobe Bryant had a coach, Mm -hmm. Um, all these great, like Alexander great, the great had a coach Mm -hmm. and he was, all these people were coached by great people. But if you think that if you're constantly saying and letting money constantly restrict your life, you're always going to have that mentality. And it's never your life is never going to come to you. Like for me, like I would rather spend my goal is to one day spend two hundred fifty thousand dollars on personal growth, because why? Why would I spend that much money on personal growth? Because that and, and probably even more, probably millions, because I know that that is the one thing that can make me more money and make me give me more time, give me happiness is hiring people that already know where I want to be and learning exactly from them. Like one of the coaches that I like to listen to, um, he had talked about basically saying, he said that basically he wanted to learn how to do Facebook ads. And the way he did is he found somebody that knew how to do it. He asked him how much he makes in a month and or no, he asked him how much he would charge him for an hour a week or hourly to, to train him one-on-one that he had to train him that this guy that was asking for the help had to do all the work that the other, the teacher couldn't do any of the work. He had to do all the hands-on work and that he would pay him for whatever he wanted. So the guy said $750 a week or an hour, I'll charge you. He was like, fine, I don't care. Within a month, he learned how to do it, made millions of dollars off of it. And that's what people don't understand is when you learn from the best, you learn the little tweaks and stuff. But I I also learned is that you can't buy courses. Go and get hands-on like feedback from these people. Don't be, spend the extra money to get personal training from people, whether it's fitness, whether it's cooking, whether it's any of this stuff, go and get hands-on and you'll learn. Like, don't be, I have one of my mentors, he was 60 years old and he didn't find what he loved and didn't make his first million until he was 55. After 55 years of searching, he did everything. He finally did it. Mm -hmm. And it was like, 
what part of the journey, what is too long? What is too short? You know? Yeah. Never like, give up. Don't be afraid. Yeah. Don't be afraid to embark on this journey. It's dark. It's lonesome, but it's worth it. <clears throat> yeah, man. As long as we're, as long as we got, you know, as long as we're upright, as I say, as long as we're upright, breathing air. Um, yes. I mean, you got the ability there. There's, there's nothing stopping us except ourselves. You know? Exactly. Exactly. And we over, we always over exaggerate the situation. Cause usually whenever I'm not in a good mood and I'm like, man, I want to give up, but then you just go to sleep or you do, you just keep going. And then you wake up the next morning. You're like, let's, let's do it again. Cause mm -hmm. when you have a blueprint to follow every day, and that's my other thing is like, I give people programmings that they can follow every day. So it's very simple and easy to achieve their goals. You just wake up, you knock those out, go to like, my thing is try and get us all my stuff done as soon as possible. The sooner I can just relax you know? Mm -hmm. And that's what I do. You don't want to just kill yourself. You want to be in it for the long run, yeah. however long it's going to take 10, 15 years. So don't put so much pressure on doing so much in a day, whereas yeah. you can do so much more in five, 10 years. Cause that's minimal. It's going to take one to three years to do some of the things that you really want to do. Well, it so, takes, ten, was it say that it takes 10 years to be an overnight success? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, yes. It, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Understand. It's like, like if you look at the story of the bamboo, how, how long does it take for a bamboo to grow? Once it's in the floor, I think it takes almost eight months. You don't see anything. Yeah. And then within three weeks, it's, it's at its highest point. Like that's what people don't understand. And it was, I think it's a lot longer for the growing point. Like it's underground. It's a lot longer. Yeah. But that's what people don't understand is like, you have to put in the time you have to put in the, and let it, let it grow. Cause you can't just go after it and just think that, Oh, within a month I'll be rich. That's not how it works. If yeah. you're willing to put in five years and not see it a dime, you'll win. It's a person that enjoys the walk instead of the destination. Destination. That yep. always win. Yep. I've said that for the longest too, you know, where, uh, the, it's, it's about the journey. It ain't about the, the destination because again, you're not going to, you're not going to find those nooks. You're not going to find those, uh, goat paths, those rabbit holes. You're not going to find those, those deep and dark places to explore. If you're just hauling ass rushing through it, trying to get to the end, uh, yeah. you're going to miss so much along the way that you could have benefited from. Um, so that's life, no matter yeah. what you do, whether it's, trying to pursue wealth, whether it's fitness, whether it's your, you know, spirituality, I mean, anything, it, it, it takes time and nurturing mm -hmm. and organic, you know, um, so much of what I, I follow is, is community-based and it's, but that's the thing that's lost nowadays. Like people at large, just, uh, they don't have the same sense of community as we once did and mm -hmm. trying to force that only ends up with it. it it doesn't take hold the roots don't sink in and then it be it just it, it fizzles out you know mm -hmm. so you got to be in it for the long haul you got to be ready to put in the work in the time the effort to nurture it along its way and see its growth as it happens organically yes feed it yes nurture it make sure that if anything pops up that needs to be trimmed out or or, or cleaned up along the way that you're taking care of it but let it grow man like let let the roots sink in let it take hold let it blossom let it die along the way i mean there's there's all of these like metaphysical things that you can add to the to the growth dynamic yeah. you know what i mean yeah. like it's it's we see it around us everywhere it's mm -hmm. we're, we're a part of it we're part of that yeah. experience mm -hmm. so what we apply that that energy to is, is it's gonna it's gonna be an extension of us exactly our whole experience so yeah exactly yeah but this has been great, man. I'm gonna actually gonna wrap it up here. Uh, if you don't mind, just uh, you know, stick around so I can, um, you know, bid you a farewell. But um, sure. yeah, man. Everybody that's that's listening and watching today, uh, David um, Masano, right? Yeah, right. But yeah, David yeah. Masano. Uh, I mentioned. I don't know. Real quick before, I don't want to speak out of turn because um, did you did you serve in the military? I did serve. That's Thank a whole you. other story. <laughs> Yeah, and I didn't want to, uh, if that's a whole other story and stuff, then I don't yeah. want to get too deep into it. But I do want to say thank you for your service. Um, of course. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that it had a part in it everything, did. you know. Yes, it did. You're welcome to say something really briefly if you want about it yeah, before no, it we was, wrap it, up. So that That's what put me, it gave me the discipline and the mindset and the grit to be 
to be chasing this and be able to be strong enough to give this to the world. So you had that that formal training, <laughs> yes, to get yes. to put you in a position to uh, to apply it in the civilian sector in your civilian exactly. life, and that's mm -hmm. great. I'm glad to hear you have had an experience, you know, from your childhood through your youth, uh, such a life potentially life changing experience. You know, battling with really dark things um, that you wanted to end it. You pushed through. You found a place to to apply yourself in. You also went to the extent of you know serving your country and and that experience really helped amplify your ability to apply yourself and and do these things and now here you are in in the west coast of the united states helping other people um yes, and, and and helping people i guess maybe across the world too i mean i That's don't know how far your cool. client clientele base is but the sky is the limit i i feel like yes, you've got sir. that vision to, to 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 get out of your own backyard <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and and really help people and it's it's been exciting to hear the passion that you shared with us today and i appreciate yeah. that of course thank you so much for letting me share it. that's my goal is to get it out there as far and wide as possible because i know it's going to reach many hearts and i know that there's people in 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 the the, the, the audience that i tend to uh, attract um there's always people looking for ways to just get through life you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and find ways of, of, of getting through life in the best way possible. So, you know, for anybody out here listening and watching that is touched by what David's been talking about today, you know, all of his details are going to be linked in the description and show notes. So be sure to give him a follow, like, subscribe, whatever the thing does, asks you to do. If what he's saying resonates with you, then follow him along. Cause as you know, as, as a content creator, um, that 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 speaks a lot and that that helps a lot you know getting that that interaction so be definitely you know definitely be sure to to yes. follow david and all of his things definitely definitely all right david i'm going to talk with you a bit offline uh for all of my listeners and followers that are tuning in today and, and watching this thank you so much be sure to check the description and show notes for all the ways that you can support midgard musings the random heathen ramblings as a whole uh, all of my socials are linked in that link tree. So click on them, do all the things that these fickle algorithm gods so ingraciously demand of us. Uh, and until we talk to each other again, may the gods continue to notice you. And may your ancestors smile upon you. And thank you, David, for being on here today. <laughs>